Welcome back to the Medical Board Exam Experience with Dr. Kwafu. Today, we have Dr. Pia Kubi, a former North China National President and also an international medical graduate of Shenyang Medical University in China. After graduating from medical school, he went to Ghana to prepare for the Ghana Medical and Dental Council Board exams, which he passed. He is currently doing his PhD in obstetrics and gynecology in Hong Kong University. His research is focused on the characterization of cervical vaginal fluid biomarkers across gestation for the identification of spontaneous preterm birth, that's SPTB. So far, he has over five publications in this area. In our subsequent interview, he will tell us more about this research area. He will also tell us how he obtained admission to do his PhD in Hong Kong, and also his experience so far as a PhD candidate in Hong Kong. Today he has joined us to share with us specifically on how he studied and prepared for the Ghana Medical and Dental Council Board exams. Let us join Dr. Pia Kubi in our discussion room. Thank you. Viewers, on this channel, I interview doctors who have successfully passed or failed any medical board exams to share the exams preparation experience with us and with all those preparing to write this. If you are watching me, and you have experience in any medical board exams and would like to share with us, kindly contact me on my Facebook page, Instagram, or leave a comment at the comment section of this video and I'll keep in touch. Please do not forget to subscribe to this channel and recommend this channel to any medical student or medical doctor who is preparing to write the board exams of any country. Thank you. So my Thank first you, question here is, um, how long did it take you to prepare for the Ghana board exams after your graduation? Okay, we 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 graduated in June, in okay. June, July, July. Okay. And we went home late July, so by August first, I was home. Mm -hmm. so we went through the, the the registration process, and then we were given letters to go to Tamale. So, okay. I, I initially planned to write in October. The exam is written in October and in in February. Okay. So. I registered to write in October, but when you register, they give you the opportunity to change the date that you write. Okay. You should change one month before the the, the date of the the date. Okay. So I registered to write in October. Then I traveled to Tamil to do my pre-registration rotation. Okay. Was that a mandatory thing you had to do? No, it's not mandatory. You can decide to do it or not. But I advise anybody who is listening to me that take your pre-registration rotation, go and observe, because the things that you observe in the world mm -hmm. help you to answer the viva, some of the viable questions. It's very okay. important. So okay. as you study along, you go to the world and look at, follow them when they are going on world rounds. Mm -hmm. You see how they put an NG tube. You yeah. see how they put a uterine catheter. Yeah. You see how they, they do abnosynthesis and all those mm. things. You they can ask you, oh, how do you put in a, a catheter? What do you okay. do? What do you consider putting a catheter? All these things you would look at them and you learn them by looking and watching. So how long did you spend uh in Tamale Hospital for your so we went to Tamale somewhere in August? Okay. I was I was in Tamale from August to January to the ending of January, to the ending of February, because the exam was written, around, I think, late February. So August, September, October, November, December, January, about six months. Okay. And then I left there, and then we came to Accra to prepare to write the exam. Okay. So will you say you started your preparation when you, you graduated, or you started when you were even a medical student? Well, for me, what we did, what I did was that when I was a medical student in China, I focused on passing my exams in China. Okay. So I advise people, if you study medicine in China or outside anywhere and you want to go back to Ghana to practice, I say okay. I tell people that it's in two phases. Okay. Phase one is getting your certificate wherever you study your medicine. Mm -hmm. Phase two is go to Ghana and learn to write the exam and become a doctor there. Okay. Some people want to be learning things for, GA, for medical license exam when they are in, 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 in China or outside studying. What if you don't okay. get a certificate? How do we register for the exam? 
Okay. So phase one for me was to make sure that I pass all my exams in China and get a certificate. Okay. Uh, and phase two is when I went home and prepared myself to write the exam to pass. So I started preparing when I went to do my internship to, to start my internship in Ghana. Okay. So did you attend any special lectures to help you prepare for the exams? Well, I honestly speak in Prince. I didn't, there were people organizing lectures. In Kolibu, people were paying thousand dollars to attend lectures. Trust me, I didn't have that kind of money to pay for a lecture. But when we went to Tamale, we were a group of students who were about about ten or fifteen. Some of us were from China, some of us were from Ukraine, some of us were from Russia. So we came together and we contributed five hundred Ghana cities each. And we talked to some of the consultants and the specialists in the Tamale Teaching Hospital, and they came together, took their money, and took us through some 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 lectures. Okay. It wasn't very comprehensive, but very important areas. They helped us in all the pediatrics, ONG. So we we'll have some two two three hours lecture with them. They will tell us the salient areas we should concentrate, and the rest we we'll either go to the ward to go and observe, or we we'll go to the library to go and study. That's what we did. So we didn't do any. I didn't go to any formal lecture or lecture. formal class. No. Okay. So the GMDC exams is in how many parts? Is it just a one-time exams, or it is in different parts? Okay. The exam we have the written part, and we have the, okay. the interview part, or what we call normally called the Bible part. Okay. So we have a written and Bible. So I will say two phases. The one you sit and write, and then the one that you face the professors and the specialists. Where they will okay. throw questions at you, then you answer. Okay, so let's focus on the rating part. How did you prepare the rating part? How did you okay. prepare for it? You know, in China, when you are in the fifth year, you go back home for a one year internship, right? Yes. So when we went back for the one year internship, I did my, my ONG, my pediatrics. And medicine at Confanochi Teaching Hospital. Okay. And I did my surgical rotation internship at Agogo Presbyterian Hospital. Okay. So while doing that, we collected materials from mm. the Ghana students. You get it. So we collected materials and some other questions and other papers from other people who have written the exam already. You know, there's one particular thing that people don't do. The community, there's an exam, one exam is community something, I've forgotten the name. We don't like public health, let me say public health. Public health, okay. Public, we don't really do a lot of public health in China. But yeah, community Ghana, medicine. Yes, community medicine. When we go to Ghana, it is a, it's an essential part of the program. Mm -hmm. So we have to collect books and other things like that to put together. So when we were collect, doing the intensive, we collect all the materials we needed. Okay. So after intensive, we went back to Ghana, China to graduate. So when we came mm -hmm. back, we had all the materials already, PPTs, okay. notes, and everything. Plus, mm -hmm. what we studied in China, we put it together. Okay. So we also bought some of the books that are used in Ghana by the Ghana students. Okay. Of what are some of the books? Do you remember some of them? Uh, that helped in your preparation. PDX, PDX, I used a book we call Lesor. Les okay. That is not the name of the book, but it's the name of the writer. Okay. Yes, it's a very popular pediatric book. It is even used in Hong Kong by Hong Kong medical students. It's an okay. international pediatric book. It's very, very good. Um, surgery, there's only one book you can use in Ghana to pass that exam. Badger. Badger. <laughs> <laughs> so when you have Badger, we call it the Bible of surgery in Ghana. It has everything that you need. For ONG, ONG, we have some practical, very, very good practical books. I've forgotten the name, but it was written by some Ghanaian professors. It was very practical. I mean, when you are reading it, every 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 case or every topic, it takes it and treats it the way you are going to treat it in the clinic. Mm. I've forgotten the name. I think I should have it, mm. but uh, it's there. it was a very good book. They okay. had a name for it. Uh, even the new edition, I saw the new edition some few years, about two years ago. 
it was also a very good book. Then medicine, medicine, I basically used the Oxford Medical Dictionary of Oxford uh, Handbook of Chemical Medicine. Um, yeah, okay. I think I, I have it here because my medical medicine is always with me. Let me see. This book, okay. I relied a lot on this book. This book. Oh, okay, okay, okay. You see, the, the, if you if you get it, it will help you in medicine. It's called Oxford Handbook of Clinical Medicine. It's very good. So mm -hmm. you combine this book with other books like Davidson, Harvard, mm -hmm. Harrison, and Co. You know, Harrison. Those books, okay. those books are lengthy. Mm -hmm. When we are preparing for an exam like this, you need concise reading. I mean, books that are yeah. concise. So if you need to to learn the pathophysiology of something, then you can follow Davidson and Harrison. Yeah. You understand? Because sometimes you need to understand the pathophysiology. Say pneumonia. Mm -hmm. You need to understand the pathophysiology. Mm -hmm. You need to understand the different yeah. classification of pneumonia, either uh, bacterial mm -hmm. pneumonia, viral pneumonia, community acquired, non community acquired. You need to know all these things. So sometimes. Mm -hmm. yeah. When you are learning the small small books, you need to broaden the knowledge. You can fall on Davis and Harris. Mm -hmm. So we did that. Mm -hmm. Those are some of the books. And then you use. We also rely on PPT from Ghana. So anybody oh, okay. who wants to learn in Ghana or write that exam, make friends with the Ghana students. Collect their PPTs. Mm -hmm. It helps because okay. they will treat the topics. They will learn them. You understand them. It helps you to understand what to do. And then when you go to the okay. clinic, you observe some of the things they do. To put you in a position mm -hmm. to pass that exam. Okay. So, how were you studying on a typical day? What was your study schedule like? How many hours were you studying a day? Um, it depends on your plan. When I was in Tamale, mm -hmm. in the morning, um, I, I did my internship was very. I, I did a lot of clinical work during internship. Did that one year of internship. Mm. So I I was used to most of the clinical procedures in the in the hospital. Okay. So when we went to Tamale for the pre-registration uh, rotation, I spent most of my time in the library because okay. I knew how to do most of the procedures already: putting catheters, mm. taking blood samples, uh, NG tubing, and all those. I had done them in Konfanoti and in Agogo. Mm. You get it. So, I decided that that six months I was preparing for the exam, I will sit and read. Okay. So in Tamale, I wasn't really going to the ward unless there's an interesting case, then I will rush to go and look at it and listen. Mm. So in Tamale, I mostly in the morning, after some breakfast, I'll go and sit in the library for the morning around 9 a.m. Then maybe around 2.30 or we'll go and have some lunch. If there's any important case in the clinic that in the world that we want to see or the specialist will come and teach we can go and listen that's what okay. i did up to january so mm -hmm. basically i was more concentrated on learning than just the clinical mm -hmm. work it was because i have I had exposed myself to a lot of clinical work in the first in the last one year when i came, i went home to do the intensive the intensive okay yeah, so after the six months when i i decided to come to accra early the exam was in the end of February. So when okay. I, I came back to Accra, I had about one month to the exam. So that mm. one, I I spoke to a friend who was living in a place where I would not be disturbed. Okay. So I took one room for myself with my books and my table and my computer. So mm -hmm. I wake up at say 7 a.m. I get something to eat. I sit behind my books and my computer from morning to 2 p.m. Wow. That I'll take about one hour or two hours sleep. I'll wake up, eat something. I read from that time, sometimes maybe six o'clock, up to twelve midnight or one a.m. Then I'll rest and wake up again at six a.m. So basically, I was determined to pass the exam once because I didn't have another thousand dollars to go and register again. Mm. So it depends on what is pushing you, you know. Yeah. Uh, I think that that exam is tricky, but if you prepare well, you will make yeah. up your mind, good mindset, you will pass. Mm -hmm. So during preparation, are there some assessment questions that you use to assess yourself before you went in for the main exams? Well, when you register with the Ghana American Data Council, they will give you, you will buy some past questions. Okay. Our time, it was 50, 50 Ghana cities. I don't know okay. how much you sell it now. 
but we bought some past questions and then um, some other senior colleagues who has also written before mm -hmm. we were able to remember some of their questions so they wrote it down for us okay so you have some of these small small past questions guiding you on how to to learn to study to study okay so during the main exam the written parts do you think some of the questions you saw were similar or the same uh, as the main exams? When I wrote the exam, we didn't get a repeated question, but okay. the questions were not different from what we have studied. Okay. If it's about pneumonia, it is about pneumonia, but it will be asked in a different way. You okay, get but the same question. Yeah, if it's about malaria, it is about malaria, they will ask in a different way. So it, it, it helps to know the pattern of the questioning. But mm -hmm. <clears throat> some other years, they got repeated questions. Oh, OK. But our year, I think we didn't get much so many repeated questions, but basically the same trend. OK, OK, OK. So you, you mentioned there is also a second part, which is, which is the oral part. Yes. How did you prepare for that part? Hmm. Prince, the truth is that after the oral part, there's no special preparation. It is the same thing that you are stating that they will ask you. Okay. So if I remember mine very well, it's a long time ago, but I remember some of the questions. In surgery, it is what we call a staple chase. I don't know whether you know what is called staple chase. Staple chase examination is that when you sit down, somebody is behind you. So you move to the next table and then the person, the next person comes to your table. When it's time, you move to the next table, and the next person comes to your table. So it's a staple chase. You go around, you get it. You go to surgery, you go to community medicine, you go to family medicine. No, family medicine, not community. So surgery, family medicine, ONG, pediatrics, community, that's a public health. And then um, I think about that's about it, five places or so. So when I go to surgery, the first question they asked me was, they showed me a chest x-ray. And they asked me to describe a chest x-ray. I did. Okay. It was a, a, a chest x-ray of a woman who had undergone mastectomy. Okay. So you need to describe it well. And there was pleural effusion and other other things that you have to see. If there's a shift in the midline, you have to describe. You know, there's a way to describe x-rays. You have to learn them how to describe the x-ray. Positioning, the kind of bone quality, it is there. You have to describe mm -hmm. the x-ray the way it's supposed to be described. So they did, I answered. Then they asked me, what are some of the possible causes of pleural effusion? Okay. So I, 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 I answered, uh, I mean, uh, lung cancers, other heart failure, all those ones, you know, they will cause pleural effusion and things. So I answered. Then they asked me, um, I should give four differentials of swollen testes. Okay. We are all asked at the same, um, the same table. from the same teacher? The, or you the, had to... There were two. So one will ask some questions, the other will ask some questions. Okay. So they asked me that question. In the same room? In the same room? In the same, yeah, the same cubicle. You are in a cubicle with them. Okay. So they, they asked me and I, I, I gave them, I, I answered. So they, they asked answer. question from different areas or yeah, yeah they can ask you any, anything from different areas pediatrics ops and gunning yes yes. Okay. yes yes no but you you it's a cubicle so if you move okay. to the next big cubicle they will ask you about ops and gunning the next cubicle they oh, ask okay. Okay. About family medicine maybe medicine. pediatrics okay yes mm -hmm. so surgery they ask you to list four differentials or swollen testes so when i listed them then the follow-up mm -hmm. question was I should differentiate them by pathophysiology, presentation, courses, you know. So if you have studied well, you know mm -hmm. some otitis uh, media, uh, I say mm -hmm. uh, otitis media, uh, no, uh, epidemiology, something like otitis. You have to, mm -hmm. you should know the course, if it is hernia, yeah. course, then you give them the pathophysiology, what causes it. So they asked me that, and I said, I, I said it. Then I moved to family medicine. Family medicine, they asked me about agit malaria. What is agit malaria? Okay. 
they ask me some other questions. They ask me what is the distance. They ask me some questions that I, I can't really recollect, but that was it. Then I moved to I moved to ONG. And then ONG they asked me to describe the pelvic mass. You get it. They asked mm-hmm. me to describe a pelvic mass. And you should know how to describe a, pe- a pelvic mass. The size, the shape, the edges, blah, blah, blah. I mean, all those ones are important. I mean, you need to be able to position of the of the, the mass. You need to, whether you can get beneath it or above it, you need to be mm-hmm. able to describe how yeah. you look at the mass. Then they asked me about um, labor and delivery. Okay. They asked me to describe the pathograph. What is in the pathograph? What are the most important things? What time do you take action? What time don't you take action? When you, you do give this medication, why do you record it? So they ask me all these things. Okay. Uh-huh. Then I move yeah. to pediatrics. Pediatrics. What did they ask me? Pediatrics. It's a long time already. Then yeah. I move. I move to medicine. Medicine. They ask me about pneumonia. They ask me about heart failure. Yeah. What are the types of heart failure? How do you distinguish them? What mm. are the you give in, in heart failure? Okay. But oh, no, sorry, antibiotics you give in pneumonia. Pneumonia. I remember I went to mes- I mention uh, one kephalosporin, kephtrizin uh, uh, or so kephalosporin, and the woman got angry. You see, you are the doctors that causes uh, problems. <laughs> it's not easy. You know? <laughs> so, I mean, my viva was smooth until medicine. Okay. They were so furious because, according to her, you should start with the lesser, like penicillins, before you move yeah. to the higher antibiotic doses. Higher antibiotic, other, yeah. other ones will cause um, resistance. Resistance. But she was angry. Blah blah blah. You, you are the kind of doctor that causes resistance in antibiotics. How do you give this drug when you can give this? You know. So, <laughs> I mean, you can't have it all smoothly. You know. Yeah. But I went through it and then. God willing. So, so ap- after the, did you feel you were going to pass after the written part and even the oral part? Did you did you knew you were going to pass? Well, Prince, what I can say to that is that was that I was cautiously optimistic. Okay. I was cautiously optimistic that I, I would pass because uh, the written was okay. I mean, the written I I I was able to finish, and I believe that. The answers I provided were correct, so the written I wasn't so bothered. It was the viva mm. that the, the, the woman at medicine caused me a lot of problem, and mm. then my OMG to when they asked me to examine the mass, I was a little scared because the the knowledge the idea was floating in my head. I couldn't organize it well. Organize it well, okay. Exactly. But uh, when they asked me about the labor after that one, I gave it to them well well. So oh, okay. I knew maybe oh and then I'll balance it 50-50 or maybe 70-50. Okay. Pediatrics, I was okay. Uh, surgery, I think I scored everything in surgery because it was my mm-hmm. first stage. So I remember clearly what they asked me in surgery. Family, mm-hmm. uh, uh, when I went to family medicine, I think I did quite good with family medicine. Um, okay. So it was medicine that the woman scared. The, the woman was giving yes. it of time. Yes. So, so was, if you are to prepare for, let's say, the board exam again, are you going to still use your study schedule, or you would have you will study in a different way? Oh, having gone through and practice, it will it will be a little simple now. Because as I'm talking yes, to you, but, tell me okay, to. Okay, assuming you have not gone through any practice, after the exams, did you wish you had studied in a certain way, oh, or no, you I felt? Think, I your, think, way, your way of preparation was enough. You did I the right thing. I think I prepared well for the exam. I mean, I prepared with, with friends like Dr. Solomon Owusu, uh, friends like um, George. Th- those guys were very good students. You get it. Okay. So, well, we studied together and uh, it wasn't bad. So we, we uh, I believe that what we did was mm. soft you know, to soft. So, will you recommend group studies for someone preparing for Ghana board exams? It depends. Not everybody does well with group studies. I don't do so much. Well with group studies. Okay. 
but sometimes, but sometimes you should avail yourself to this. Mm-hmm. Somebody can say something, can say something that it sticks, it you know. Sticks. Oh, yeah. so you say something uh, like this about like money. Like oh, I remember you said, mm-hmm. oh, I remember you said, you get it. Oh, last yeah. time we were discussing something, you said, um, when a woman, a pregnant woman comes in bleeding, what do you do? Because it's an emergency, it's an obstetric yeah. emergency. What do you do? Well, you said this, this, I remember, it helps you. But basically, yeah. I like to study on my own. But if you can mm-hmm. make time to, to join a group, it's okay, but you need okay. to be careful because some people drag the group back. The group back, yeah. Exactly. If you don't take care, you go and sit there. Some people like to chat unnecessarily. So yeah. you need to weigh the options yourself and see what is good and what is not good. Okay. It's very, very important. Otherwise, if you want to always go and sit in a group and you all end up chatting and chatting and chatting, you will learn nothing. Yeah. So you have an experience in China education. A medical student in China who is preparing to write the Ghana board exams. What advice do you have for such a person looking at how the China education system is compared to how the Ghana board exams is? What advice do you have for such a person? If you are studying in China and you want to pass Ghana American Data Council registration exam, you cannot pass with what you study in China alone. Because in China, nobody has taught you how to how to treat malaria. Mm-hmm. Let me let me give you a typical example. In a typical village, a patient comes in half coma. You don't have a means to test his sugar. Mm-hmm. You think that will happen in China? No. Yes, because. But you can be working in a typical village without that. So yes. when a patient comes in like that, you cannot check if his RBS is high or low. You don't know what's mm-hmm. concerned. The, the, you know the patient diabetic. His history yes. should like diabetic. But the patient comes in comatose. You don't know. Mm-hmm. You can't test sugar. What do you do? When you go and learn in Ghana, they'll tell you what to do. Yeah. You understand? Because mm-hmm. those are some of the little, little things that are, you cannot learn in Ghana, in China. In China, okay. Get it. We don't have very good machines for diagnosis. So in Ghana, we, we rely on physical examination. Okay. You get it. So yeah. a person will come with pure effusion. You have to percuss the chest. In China, you will learn percussion, but you will not really be using it because in China, if a, a patient comes with shortness of breath, the next thing is that you don't know CT or culture CT scan. And sitting mm-hmm. will show that oh, the patient's chest is full of, of fluid or blood, whatever. You get but in China, in Ghana, you may be in some, some district hospital even without a chest x-ray. How do you know that a, a, a patient's chest is full of fluid to drain? You get mm-hmm. my point? So you yes. need to go back home, look at the ways, go to the clinic, go to a district, go to a, a teaching hospital, look at how it is done. Because those are the questions they will ask you when they, they, they interview you, you do the Bible. Mm-hmm. Okay. Sometimes they will, they will even ask you, uh, what did you observe in the hospital? I mean, they didn't okay. ask me that question, but many of my colleagues, they ask them, what did you observe? So if you say, oh, I saw heart failure, what is heart failure? Mm-hmm. How is it? What did you see in the patient? Did you examine yeah. the patient? When you examine the patient, what did you see? Yeah. You get it. But in mm-hmm. China, you may not have that opportunity. Yeah. So if you want to stay in China to study for Ghana, it's not advisable. Go home. Look mm-hmm. at how the Ghanaian people do their things, how they examine, how they treat. In that mm-hmm. way, you'll be able to answer questions when you are asked. Okay. Okay. I think so. So you recommend that after your graduation, go home, have more clinical experience in Ghana, then have time to prepare for the exams. Exactly. Because some of the things that we were able to answer, we saw them. We didn't re- really read them, you know. They asked a friend um, about phototherapy. Okay. How is phototherapy done? Mm-hmm. Mostly in the book, the book will not really describe how phototherapy is done. They will, well, the food can, do, the books can describe. But what is it done? It's easy to say it. To say it. To say yeah. it. You get it. But if you have not yeah. seen 
photo therapy being done and you have only read it, sometimes you cannot remember. Mm, yeah, it's true. Uh -huh. So some of all those things are important. They even asked a friend about an incubator. He forgot the name of incubator. He tried and tried. <laughs> <laughs> you see? So yeah. that is how it is. I would advise that if really you want to practice in Ghana, mm -hmm. go home, get material from home, visit the hospital, go and learn how it is done, go to the pediatric ward, go to the NIC, see how, because they will ask you all these things. They will ask you. So um, this is just a little off from our main discussion. Most people from China or Ukraine, when they go back, Home, they say at the hospitals, the doctors underestimate them. They don't. They think they are bad students and all that. What was your experience as a foreign trained doctor, having clinical experience in Ghana hospitals? <clears throat> Prince, my nickname was Chin Chong. <laughs> you got okay. it. So you got, you got that in, in China or Ghana? In Ghana, my nickname because I was trained in China, so my nickname, my nickname was Chin Chong. Oh, they were calling it in turn. Okay. So the truth is that, look, humans, we are like that. Okay. Okay. Once we don't belong to a certain jurisdiction, mm. when somebody walks into your jurisdiction, you feel like the person is, is not equal to you. It's not the same. Yeah. You get it. So, indeed, when you train in Russia, wherever, and you go back home, be prepared to go through some of those things. Okay. You get it. Uh, let me yeah. see if I remember a typical experience. Um, one day we were in the pediatric ward in Konfanochi. It's a pediatric emergency ward. And the professor was teaching the medical students, the, the okay. fourth, fifth year medical students. And myself and my colleague, we wanted to listen. So we we're hiding behind the medical students. Because the man can throw questions anyhow. Uh, mm -hmm. you are, because of the way that you are treated, you don't even you are not even confident enough to even show your face. Confident. Yeah. So we are hiding behind. Then the man asked a question, said, the one hiding behind, the black one, me. <laughs> so I showed my face and he was he asked, I, I don't know you. And I said, oh, I, I am I am an intensive student. And it was uh, from where I said from China. Oh. Let me give the question to someone else. Oh, you get it. So sometimes these things do happen. You you get into it and you realize that they make you feel you don't belong there. Yeah. But you know, we prove them wrong. Mm -hmm. That is one thing that you can do. Let them push you around, but prove yeah. them. Yeah. Myself and some of my colleagues, Solomon Usu, myself, um, George and Co. We a, a lot of some guys from Dali and mm. we decided that we put them wrong. So no matter the the insult they threw at us, we, we were there. And with time, we realized that oh the guys are willing to be here. So let's teach them. They taught us, and the time came, we we're doing it more than their students. Okay. So those discriminatory comments here and there, look, it will come. Just don't listen. When you prove yourself, they will like you. At the tail end of my ONG rotation, the house officers were working under. They leave their cases for us to do, and then they'll go mm. home because they realize that the guys can do it. Yeah. I had a friend, Kwame Chibo Siakon, he's a doctor, he's an he's a MO in Ghana right now. Oh, he will leave his work for me and go and stay at home and call me, Charlie, you finish that thing. I said, well, I finish him. So yeah. if you don't pay attention to those things, yeah. you'll be fine, and it will help you to also pass the exam. So after the discrimination, okay. trust me, it is there. Okay. All right, Dr. Dr. Apia Kubi, thank you very much for joining us today and we hope to have you another.